Hey, it's Van from Tandrone. Today we're out here doing a challenge where we get somebody completely new to photogrammetry uh, to create a high resolution 3D model of the structure behind here. So we have uh, Jiraj here today with us. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself, Jiraj? Uh, my drone experience in the past comes down to flying Mavic 3s and Autel Evo lights. All right, so the first thing we need to do uh, with the Mavic 3 Enterprise in particular is we need to set up the DRTK base station uh, in order to use the facade mapping feature of the drone. Uh, typically, if you have the ability to connect to the NTRIP network using the RTK module that's built in, into the drone, and then you can skip this step. Why do you think we need to set up this uh, DRTK base station? I'm guessing it's just gonna give the drone more accuracy when it's in the air? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, because we're using the facade mapping feature and you're flying relatively close to the building, you're gonna wanna have a solid positioning data for the drone. The first thing we need to do is probably put the battery in there, pop that in there and there's a lid. So typically with a DRTK like this, you would set it up over a known point or you would use the NTRIP uh, correction network. But for today, we're just creating a, a simple 3D model. So we can literally just set it up anywhere that's suitable. So we'll wanna make sure that it's uh, away from any obstructions, uh, which we are. So we can pretty much set it up right here. Perfect. And then what we wanna do is you wanna make sure it's level, all right? So, you can do that by just kind of don't uh, maybe not tighten it up too tight yet. And then what we do is we just move kind of the the tripod here a little bit until we're pretty level. Okay. So that's good. Uh, what we do is we'll let this kind of stabilize itself and connect to all the satellites. Uh, that's indicated by this um, kind of yellow light here. And when that when that turns solid green, that means it's it's connected and ready to go. Okay. So the next step is to set up the drone. And turn it on. Uh, so before we do that, let's do a pre-flight check, right? So what are you looking for? Oh, just making sure that the drone doesn't have anything on top of it, on the actual, um, the surface of it. Also check over the props to make sure that they're not cracked or anything like that. Some other stuff as well, just to check over the actual um, obstacle avoidance sensors to see if they're smudged or anything like that to make sure they're cleaned. Mm -hmm. Um, same thing with your gimbal as well. Just make sure it's not obstructed or if the gimbal um, doesn't move around freely enough. Go into the advanced menu here. Go into RTK. Yeah, and then select that DRTK mobile station. It's converging. So it looks like, yeah, it, this thing has already been connected to this aircraft in the past, so it recognizes it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's connected. Yeah, so we're good there. And now the RTK is no longer red, so that means we have uh, an RTK connection. We're essentially creating a, a base map uh, for the area first. So we'll do a quick photogrammetry mission, like a, just a pre-planned one. So if you go back to the main menu here, and what do you think? Yeah, what, what go flight, flight route? route? Okay, yeah. yeah. And then we'll create a new flight route. Okay. Yeah, create route. And we'll yeah. do an area route first, yep. Yeah. Okay, and then find where we are. Let's zoom in here. Yeah, gotta draw the box around that. Yeah, it doesn't have to be too tight. Yeah, just a uh, little bit out like there. Yeah, that's good. What do we have? We have the Mavic 3 Enterprise series, Mavic 3 Enterprise, yep, that's correct. We, we can go through the settings now, all right? This will determine um, your, your flight line. So if we look at things like the, the GSD, right? So ground sampling distance, are you familiar at all with that term? You might have heard? Um, yeah, I've heard of it before. Um, just like layman's term, I guess, would be um, how like high you collected the data from. So like if you have a lower GSD, the more times the drone has uh, returned a bunch of data rather than it being higher. Yeah, yeah, kind of similar to that. Yeah, so the lower the GSD, so ground sampling distance value, um, I would say the higher the resolution your your maps or you know whatever photogrammetry model you're going to create. So the more detail you're going to get, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you know the so the lower the GSD, the lower you're going to be flying to. You're going to be flying much closer to the ground or the structure. Um, and that will increase, you know, the flight time by maybe you have to do more overlaps. Um, so it's entirely dependent what, on what type of kind of quality of model you want, right? And today we're, we're tr trying to get a pretty detailed model. So um, what we can do, uh, we can reduce the GSD down to like maybe even like two. Let's see what that looks like. Sure. Okay, well, that's still quite uh, significantly just one flight line, really. Uh, maybe down, you can uh, bring it down to one even. 
Not so at one, yeah, it's still one flight line, but there's another setting that we can adjust, which is the overlap. Okay, here's where our overlap settings are. So for photogrammetry models, like 70, 75 is perfectly. So we can actually increase that to 80, the side overlap. Okay, so now that we see that it increased the, the flight line to two. When we hit the launch button, it's pretty much going to take off and do its thing. Our job is to just monitor and make sure that uh, we're not, you know, going to collide with anything. Uh, at any point where you're uncomfortable and we need to pause, hit the pause button right there and we can take control of the aircraft, okay? Okay, now the aircraft is going to return. Awesome. So now is the more advanced step, right? Now we're going to the facade mapping feature. Yep. So what you can do is go back to the main menu here and we'll create a new mission. And yeah, create route. And you see the slope route right there, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, again with this feature, it's gonna require us to manually take off. And then we're gonna uh, enable that mode to augment uh, the, certain, the kind of the area of interest that we wanted to be in there. So okay. um, I'll kind of walk you through the process. It should be pretty straightforward. So uh, yeah, you can take off. Good. Yeah. We're all safe. Okay. So yeah, the first surface we're going to do is this, this side of the building that we see right here. So you see this uh, mapping area right here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's defining the kind of the, the area that we're interested in, right? So right now it's uh, we're not able to cover the full thing necessarily, so we're gonna actually have to back it up. Uh, back it up. Yeah, right. back it up. Press the C1 button, which I believe is in the back there. Yeah, C1. So it's gonna take that, right? Okay, so what we need, need to do now is adjust the area of interest, right? So you see this blue box here? So try to kind of yeah, adjust it so that it tightens up to this, the, the building structure right here. What we need to do right now is actually we need to fly forward and then to the side of the building to verify that it is kind of matching that surface. So uh, what we need to do is move it out a little bit more. So that's the first one. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, the yeah the y uh, the x axis. Yeah. There you go. There we go. Looking good. It doesn't have to be perfect, but yeah. as long as you're trying to get it as close as possible, then you're good, right? And then now you need you want to kind of there's power lines over this side, so you want to fly over this side to just check this side that you're you've got that surface too. And it looks like, yeah, the bottom portion is slightly, you know, uh, outside of the building, so you can adjust that. And you can even adjust the corners there, yeah, so you can drag it. There you go. And so we have 0.2 GSD. So now you can see what the flight line might look like, right? So do you see any obstructions that we should be concerned about, like within the um, augmented here? So look around to the left and right. I think the biggest part is probably just like the little trees down there, right? Yeah. So we'll watch out for that while we're flying. You can hit the play button and then yeah, just accept everything okay and then hit start okay so yeah we just monitor it and it's just gonna go sideways it's gonna lower to altitude and we can move up a little closer here too That's it. Yep. So now uh, what we could do is just uh, pause the return to home because we still have plenty of power. Yep. Uh, and now we're going to apply it to this, these two sides of the buildings, right? So mm -hmm. I'll let you kind of run through that yourself. And it's okay if it overshoots a little bit, so it's so small. Okay. So that was pretty much it. That's one data side. Yep. Uh, and now we need to collect the other side. Okay, so this side is actually pretty tight with the power lines. So we're probably going to have to do it manually. So All right. Essentially, what we're doing is we're going to set it to uh, two second shutter mode. So it's going to take a picture every two seconds. And what you're going to do is you're just going to fly as if you're like painting the scene. You know okay. how you're using LiDAR. Similar idea. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. So uh, with that being said, uh, we have two seconds for shutter. And um, yeah, what you can do is hit the, the shutter button uh, on the left side, on the right side here. This guy here? No, the, the shutter button, the 2S. Two 2S. S. Two yeah. So it's going to take a photo every two seconds. So aim the camera down at the building. And we're just going to go side to side here. And then we're going to start at that altitude. Yeah, so just yep. go slowly. Yeah, keep going. 
until you cover the whole entire side of the building. We're just manually mapping it at this point. So once you pass the building, okay, that's good. And now we're gonna go down like five feet, just okay. downwards, downwards, like lower in altitude. Can you go down a little more? Okay, now aim the camera so that it's like kind of getting the structure in there and now come back. Just slowly, yeah. Okay, and then come down another five feet. Okay, and then reposition the camera so you have that uh, structure in the frame. Okay, and then now do the same thing. So you are the robot right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now not down another five feet. Down. Okay. Get lower. Sure. Keep going. On the other side, we're still missing data. So yeah. now we're just going to also do a manual flight using that shutter thing and then just try to the same kind of idea like paint the scene here okay um so you can just yeah it doesn't have to be perfect just try to get the the structure within the shot uh, as much as possible and yeah you can fly to the other side i know there's a building right close to it so we're just going to get it as best as possible right it's also like a wire running across as well yeah yeah so just go in that and then down a little bit and come back and that should be sufficient doesn't hurt to have extra photos just more kind of data for the reconstruction a little bit slower and then come down at altitude. Good. Okay, and you can come one one step lower because uh, you still have a little more room. Yeah, that's good. And re-aim the camera so it's right in, yeah, the structure is in the middle of it. Come back. That's good. Okay, so I think we, yeah, we had that initial flight that covered the roof, but we want to get a little more detail. So same idea, just go, uh, go up a little bit higher. That's a good altitude, come forward. Okay. And then look at, look down at the roof. And now we're going to paint the roof. Okay, that's good. Okay, yeah. For the most part, we should have, you know, more than enough images to cover this area. Um, sometimes I like to do just an orbit around the structure, manually flying it to capture even more data. Okay. So uh, yeah, you can, I think that's a good, go up a little bit higher. That's a good altitude. Um, now look down, move back away from the structure so you have most of the structure in sight. And now start that capture process and you're just gonna try to orbit as smoothly as possible around the structure. Do a full 360. You can focus on the, 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 yeah. the camera and I'll, I'll watch out for the power lines here. And stop. Yeah, yeah. there you're good. Okay. Yeah. Can you orbiting? Yeah, you're good. And that will cover any blind spots that we, we might miss, you know, maybe around the corners here. Awesome. Okay. We want to get really high resolution kind of images of this, this uh, rooftop right here. So you can get fly up close to it, kind of start from the left side here and, and we're going to sweep it. So uh, yeah. hit, hit the shutter button and just fly really slowly, like low stick and put. Yeah. And that's going to give us really high detail of the, uh, the roof shingles here. Okay. That's good. All right. So you, done your first kind of photogrammetry slash 3D modeling mission. So what are your thoughts so far on, on the process? Um, from first thought, I think it's pretty easy to get going when it comes to flying and setting up a mission. So that was, I guess, the easy part. And now we got to go back and do some data processing. 
Um, so let's get back to it. All right, so we've finished the data capture and downloaded the data onto the computer. Uh, what we'll be using next is uh, a software called Reality Capture that is really good at uh, generating 3D models. Uh, it's free to use. Uh, so I'll walk you through the process of uh, importing the data. First thing we need to do is obviously import our images into the software. Uh, what you want to do is hit the folder. And then what we'll do is we want to make sure that we select include all subfolders because we did multiple flights to cover uh, that building, so it created multiple projects. The next step is literally pressing start and the, the software will automatically align the images and create the model for us. So if you see up the top here, you can hit start. And yeah, go ahead. All right, so that took a little while to process, uh, but now we have a nice uh, 3D model uh, in reality capture. So you can see all the, the images that you've taken from the different perspectives. Um, is there anything that you notice with the data that is uh, doesn't look right? Um, I'd say on this side of the building, we do have a giant hole uh, to where the scan, I guess, didn't reach. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, there, there was a power line running through there and we we're trying to run that automated mission. So we were only, it, it only captured from the, like a higher angle looking down. So yeah, you'll have holes in your data set in areas that you don't cover. I guess the best practice next time is just to take more photos and maybe even fly this mission manually to cover the areas, right? Um, and as you can see in, in this particular area right here, we took a lot more kind of shots from uh, different heights and it looks like we captured most of it. However, there's still like the underside of the roof there that we didn't get quite low enough to, to look up and, and capture it. But I think overall, this is a, a great job for your first time kind of try, try to create a, a 3D model from it. Uh, first off the bat, I feel like, you know, pretty easy to take your drone out there and take a couple of pictures and get this out of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I can see that this model is pretty cool. What if I have people on my team that want to take a look at the 3D model that I just created? and I want to share, you know, across the platform, but, you know, I can't share the actual file. I just want to share the model with them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, not everybody has uh, access to a, a 3D modeling software. Um, so that's where uh, we have uh, Nira come in. It's a web software that allows you to view 3D models in very high resolution. Um, and you can essentially send a link to anybody that can access that model. Um, so the nice thing about Nira is that it's integrated with a reality capture. So it's literally just one press of a button and it'll upload to the cloud and then you can access the model. So uh, in order to do that, uh, you can click on the top left corner of that kind of logo up there and then you can go to share and you can hit upload to Nira. And uh, yeah, you can leave all these uh, parameters uh, at default and you can hit upload. All right, so the model has uploaded to Nira. Uh, so this is just a web link and it can be accessed from most browsers. So we can pop into there and look at the uh, high quality model. So this is 120 million triangles. So pretty high resolution stuff. So we can look around here. Looks pretty photorealistic, right? Yeah. Even with the last part that we did with the shingles and stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Looks like a pretty good detail here. Yeah, even on the roof as well. That was one of the challenges I had when I first started kind of doing th uh, 3D modeling and photogrammetry with, uh, with drones, um, was that I created all these nice models, but then they're like these massive, you know, proprietary files that I couldn't share, right? And there's other services online that uh, offer that, but they don't offer it to the, I'd say the quality of of the Nero software right here. So um, this kind of really adds another dimension to be able to, sh to share these models uh, with pretty much anybody. Uh, what did you think about the entire process from, you know, like the data collection to the processing itself? Um, start to finish, I feel like it was very easy just because, you know, all you need to do is set up a drone, an RTK uh, station, um, and find the object that you want to scan. Once you have all the pictures that you've gathered, uh, take the SD card, plop it into the computer and load it into the software. I feel like, you know, if somebody is uh, on the fence, it'd be very easy for them to jump into this type of sector. So as you can see, creating a 3D model with drones is relatively easy to do. We use the Mavic 3 Enterprise to capture the data. Then we put the data into Reality Capture to process it into a 3D model. And finally, we exported the model into Nira in order to share it across the web. Thanks for watching your video. And if you found the information useful, please follow us on social media for more upcoming content. If you want to learn more about 3D modeling and photogrammetry, please visit our website at candro.com.